the state of Texas continues to reopen. This Friday, cosmetology businesses have the green light to open their doors once again. But some are concerned what this could mean for the spread of the coronavirus. Joining us now is the man behind all the legislation, Governor Greg Abbott. Governor, thank you very much for joining us. Great to be with you. Thank you so much. All right. And initially, opening the cosmetology businesses was going to be planned for phase two of your legislation, which was set for May 18th. So why move it up 10 days? Well, let, let's go back to the words that I spoke on April the 27th uh, when I began talking about what could be open. I did actually carve out an exception for uh, barber shops and hair salons because uh, my words in that speech were that uh, there is an area that I want to open up sooner, if at all possible, uh, and that is barber shops and hair salons. And I said that we would continue our work talking to the doctors as well as talking to members of the industry to find the safest strategies to accomplish that goal. Beginning that day, all the way up until the time of the announcement, we did actually reach out and we talked to so many of these barber shops and hair salons that we got best practices strategies. We learned a lot about how they do their business. Uh, we ran all that through our doctors. Our doctors gave it the green light to go ahead, and that's exactly what we did. And according to the Texas.gov website, the strike force to open Texas includes about 50 business owners, but only six health care workers. Why is that number not closer to being balanced? Well, we want to make sure that as far as business owners are concerned, there would be uh, representation from uh, across the state of Texas, including down in the Rio Grande Valley. But as it concerned the medical advice, we brought in the very best of the best. We brought in uh, someone who is a uh, former head of the United States Food and Drug Administration, former head of the United States Medicaid and Medicare, uh, an infectious disease specialist at the University of Texas uh, Health Science System who is in charge of uh, COVID tracing and tracking, as well as is the state uh, health care advisor at the Department of State Health Services, as well as uh, the vice chancellor uh, for health care at the University of Texas system. So uh, we have a very robust uh, medical team uh, providing advice, uh, including someone who is interconnected with everything going on in the U.S. And then I can add on top of that, I have twice a week communications with Dr. Burks, who you see on TV, uh, who is advising the White House and the United States of America uh, on the response to COVID-19. So with access to all those doctors, I have the best advice about the correct strategies. And Dr. Burks herself said uh, the Texas strategy to open up business was a, and I quote, a great strategy. All right, and in a Friday phone call you made that's now been made public, you admitted to an increased danger in reopening. You even said there is a greater possibility for transmission. And my question is, is there a number that is tolerable to any government, state or federal, that people are willing to accept in order to save the economy? First, uh, you mentioned that uh, what I said in that phone call, I've said that dozens of times. I've said that, that in the, across the entire state of Texas, and it's not anything that I have created. It's a, a repeat of what you've seen every doctor say. Uh, and the reason why every doctor says it is because we're talking about an infectious disease. And so uh, whenever uh, people come into contact with each other, when there's an infectious disease, there is a transmission. And so one thing we know about science is that as long as infectious disease exists, and as long as people interact, there'll be a transmission. But here's the goal. The goal is, number one, what we did do, and that is to slow the spread of the coronavirus. Two is to build a bridge from where we are now to the point where we will have a vaccination as well as a medical treatment such as uh, either an injection or pills that people can take that can help them get over COVID-19. In building that bridge, that's where we are right now. So we want to be able to get people from being locked down and get people who are not able to pay their bills. There's so many people who have lost their jobs who need to get back reengaged. And we have seen over the past month, stores can be open, grocery stores can be open, hardware stores can be open, other essential businesses can be open while we continue to slow the spread. So that means we can open up more businesses as long as people continue these safe distancing practices wearing a mask, washing their hands, trying to stay six feet away from others. And this week, the commissioner of the Texas Department of Agriculture said our rural health care system is about to fail. The commissioner Sid, Mil Sid Miller even sending you a letter in March requesting $40 million to support rural health care facilities. Um, how do you how are you plan on responding to that request? 
That money's already been sent out. As of, as of when? Uh, last month. Because they say they still haven't received it as of yesterday. Oh, I know it was authorized last month. All right. Governor Abbott joining us now. Governor, thank you so much for your time. Sure.